Welcome to the What's Up London show. I'm your host, Jennifer Slay. Before we start, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge my ancestors that came before me and express my appreciation and recognition of the privilege that I have to live on Indigenous lands, specifically the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, the Naipawak, and Ottawandran peoples. Today's show is all about taking care of ourselves during the holidays. We have a naturopath, we have chiropractors, and we have psychotherapists who are going to provide us with helpful tools and strategies to be healthy mentally and physically during the holiday season. Good morning, Dr. K. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much for being on our special show today, where we're talking to people about the holidays and how to take care of themselves. And I've always loved the holidays, but I always find every year without fail, that my, I don't feel well, I feel tired, I feel sluggish. And in working with you, I've realized it, a lot of it had to do with diet. And so you're a naturopath. And can you just talk to us a little bit about how diet and um, can help us through the holidays? Yes, absolutely. So typically, what happens is people get so far out of their usual routine, which means that you know, they're not eating the things that they normally do. They're not sleeping. Um, maybe there's alcohol consumption, more caffeine. So they're not getting enough water. There's a bunch of things that tend to derail us over the holidays. So, you know, you might not have control over staying up late and, and things like that. But what I would say is that there are certain things throughout the day that you can do to help yourself feel better so that you aren't getting that sluggish, kind of grumpy, maybe shaky feeling. Um, so some, some key things to remember would be, you know, for example, if you are going to have any alcoholic beverages or anything with caffeine, just remember to pair it with water. Um, because the main thing that, that we get is those side effects from dehydration. So that would be one thing. Another thing is if you know, for example, that you're going to be staying up really late, that is something that impacts your immune system. So if that's the case, make sure that you have you know, a good collection of supplements on hand, like vitamin D, vitamin C, maybe some zinc, um, oil of oregano is pretty popular as well. Having those on hand, just in case you're starting to feel like that little tickle in the back of your throat um, is a good idea. Mm. The other thing that I would say is um, enjoying your meals. Like, you know, people feel really guilty about eating, you know, all the treats and things like that. I would say, let's leave the guilt, but maybe eat it earlier in the day so that you have time to digest it. And it's not impacting your sleep quality because the later you eat, and this is any time, it impacts the quality and depth of the sleep that you're getting. Basically, what I'm hearing is that the body likes predictability. It likes to, you know, this, the structure, regular meals and stuff like that, that we knew, normally do. But at the holidays, because we're going to all these parties, we're doing all this stuff, we're eating all this food, um, that we don't normally eat, it kind of puts our system into shock. Yes, absolutely it does. And the body is all about predictability, all about routine. So anything that throws you off, whether it be, you know, staying up late or even just being around different people, different energies and situations that may be stressful, either good stress or bad stress will have an impact on the body. Um, you know, change in, in how much movement you get in a day um, people typically around the holidays have a lot of problems with, you know, digestion, constipation, diarrhea, um, acid reflux that, you know, they don't normally have. And, and part of that is movement. So even if you're just taking a little walk around after you eat, that's a really good idea to help things move along. Okay. All right. And that would explain why in January, so many people get sick. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you're saying the, the supplements mm -hmm. and um, exercise, water, those are the things that can really support us during the holidays in terms of um, our, our immune system and just healthy eating or not healthy eating, but just healthy lifestyle through the holidays. And I, I think people get overwhelmed with the list, you know, the eating, the drinking, the, the exercise, you know, the meditation, they get really overwhelmed with that. And I think that even if you just pick and choose a couple of things that you can consistently do over the holidays and, and even moving forward into January, that makes a huge difference with your health. 
Awesome. And so can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Just, you've, you've provided us with some great tips, but just a little bit about what, what it is that you do. Yes, for sure. So I'm a naturopathic doctor. My focus is in sports medicine. So I do talk a lot about nutrition and um, injury rehab and hydration with people. And uh, insomnia and chronic stress have really been a big part of that. So I may use, you know, acupuncture, I might use herb supplements, um, diet and lifestyle changes to help people. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. K, for being here with us today and supporting everyone through the holidays. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome back. Our guest is Liz Salos, and she is a psychotherapist. Welcome, Liz. Thank you so much. So good to be. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about what you do and specialize in. Well, I'm a psychotherapist. Um, I do therapy counseling with those who would like to chat with somebody, and my specialties are trauma and loss, and how those, whether they, the trauma or loss happened a number of years ago or recently, and how they can deal with it, look at it, take it apart, do whatever they need to do with it, give them a safe space to be able to do that. Nice. And the holiday season tends to bring up a lot of things for a lot of people. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, it's a tough season of the year because it's supposed to be happy and it is, it's very happy, but sometimes those sad feelings sneak in and we think, Oh, we can't do that because it's, we're supposed to be happy, but just being able to say that we've, we're sad and there's a good reason to be sad. Mm -hmm. Acknowledging the feelings essentially. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And so when someone does find themselves feeling really down, feeling sad, during this happy season, what are some suggestions or strategies you can provide for them? Um, just, you know, through the TV. <laughs> there's lots of things you can do. You can acknowledge that it, there's a reason why you're sad and there's a good reason why you're sad. Um, sometimes holidays had been really, were really bad when you were children, when people were children. And that sort of continues in when they're adults and they don't know what to do with that sadness, knowing that they're supposed to be happy, but they don't have the learning on how to be happy during these holidays. And sometimes people have lost someone or something that's really, really important to them and they don't know how to incorporate that loss. So to incorporate that loss, you can have a new tradition, have a new thing that you do because that person is no longer with us, but you want to acknowledge that they were important to you somewhere during that time. Some people will take a special time to go and visit a certain spot or even a grave site or have a spot set at the Christmas dinner table for the person that's not there. And to talk about them, talk about who's not here, you know, when just, you know, there's many different things that each individual can do, but just acknowledging that this is something they can do is a good idea. Yeah. And sometimes it's not necessarily that someone has even lost someone or gone through a trauma, but it might be something like loss of a dream. Like they thought that they'd have kids or they thought that they'd be married or they thought that life would look differently for them and the holidays signify or just brings to light that they haven't. Um, any support, supportive words for them? Again, recognize that this is a legitimate feeling and a legitimate thought. And what can you do that would make the holidays feel comfortable for you? Some people go away and that's okay. Uh, some people will say, I wish we had children now. Let's see what we can do to bless other children to be able to, you know, recognize that there's that aspect missing in their lives. Sometimes it's, we don't have a big, beautiful house, but we can have a big, beautiful celebration, you know, things like that. 
Yeah. I read somewhere uh, that, you know, when you're going through something, sometimes the best thing to do is to help somebody else. And that can really help you to feel better. Definitely. Soup kitchens, you know, places where dinners are being held, even the sock and mitten campaigns that are out in so many organizations, you know, you can su supply something to there in someone's need. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being here, Liz, and thank you for the ideas. Well, I'm really hoping that the viewers get something from that. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Welcome back. So you might be wondering, at the beginning of the show, I talked about we have chiropractors as our guest. What's the connection between chiropractor and the holidays and mental and physical wellness? Well, Dr. Kresimir and Dr. Rochelle are here to talk to us just about that. Welcome. How are you guys? Good. Hi, Jen. So thanks for having us. Yeah, we're really happy to be here. No problem. No problem. So tell us about the importance of chiropractic care and your mental and physical wellness. Yeah, so chiropractic care, well, first of all, there's different styles of chiropractic care. The kind that we practice is involved with making sure that your spine stays healthy, because if your spine stays healthy and is moving well, the nerve system, which runs in the spine, can do its job better. And as everybody knows, the nerve system controls and coordinates all the functions of the human body. So making sure that the organs and the glands have proper neurological communication, is helpful to both physical, emotional, and mental health. Nice. And so how can we enjoy the holiday season without sacrificing our health? Good question. Do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. I think one of the things that I found super helpful is like, I think about like, how do I want to feel at the end of the holidays? You know, I know a lot of times at the end of the holidays, I've you know, I felt really like gross and, you know, my pants are too tight and I'm, you know, my mental health is struggling. And so I decided like, I don't want to feel that way at the end of the holidays, but I still want to be able to, you know, have some drinks with my friends and have a few more parties. So one of the things that I found super helpful was thinking about how do I want to feel at the end of the holidays? And one of the biggest things too, is like, I make sure every morning when I wake up, I get a little bit of movement in. I, you know, whether that's just like, if I'm at my parents' house, I still like go for a walk. If I'm at home here, I go for a walk with the kids. Like getting a little bit of movement in every morning, it just really sets up my day to really enjoy the holidays and not feel really gross by the end. Yeah, I like to plan. So there's certain events that we're looking forward to in the holiday season. And there's other ones that we kind of get feels like we're, we need to go, but we really, you know, we don't really want to go. So if I can plan to enjoy the ones that I'm really looking forward to, um, then, you know, I have a schedule in my mind of what it is I'm going to eat, when it is I'm going to eat, and I can enjoy those meals versus eating and then feeling guilty about it after, which, you know, which leads into the, into the other one, which is not just you know, planning, but making sure that I'm doing the other things. So it doesn't turn into, you know, two or three days of eating poorly or, or not moving my body. It turns into one event. And then the next day I'm back on to being what I normally do. Nice. Wonderful. And so if you had, I'm putting you on the spot. If you had like the top two strategies people can do over the holidays to take care of their health, what would those top two things be? You do one and I'll do one. I'll do my two. <laughs> okay, you do and then two. you'll do. Three. So um, my 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 two are to do the other things that you know to be healthy. Everybody knows we're going to eat certain things or certain treats that are around that we like to enjoy during the holiday season. So I would make sure that we're focusing on the other aspects, like going to the gym or movement, seeing my chiropractor, you know, doing the other things that I know to support my health. I would really focus on doing those and not missing out on those. Well, now you just stole all my answers. So <laughs> no, but my two things that for me are the most helpful, like I said, getting my movement in every day and it doesn't have to be going to the gym, but it's like getting up for a walk every morning. And one of the things I like to do is if I know I'm going for Christmas dinner or Christmas party, I always eat a really healthy, full protein rich meal before I go because it keeps me full. And then I don't tend to really overeat. I mean, I'll still eat snacks and treats because I'm really here for that, but it's not... <laughs> like a free for all. I love that. Eat before you go so that you don't 
Yes. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Awesome. And so one of the excuses that people will come up with, excuse, reason, whatever, um, during the holidays is, oh, I can't get to the gym. I have the kids home now and I can't do that. How can we incorporate the kids into, into helping us for those of us who have children? So Rochelle will talk about how to do that because she has to do that more often than me. But the one that I will say is if that's really true, then that's okay and embrace it. You know, enjoy the situation that you're in. And if you really can for the time being, do what you can. But, you know, let's quit with the negative self-talk and let's speak kindly to one another and realize that this is just a fleeting time in our life. It'll be over in a month and we can get back on with it then. Yes. And for me, I tried to just incorporate the kids, like something fun. We'll be head to the um, high school by my house. And I said, let's run around the track as fast as we can. And just try to do like fun little things like that. Do like a little obstacle course with the park and just like try to move and have fun with them. You know, that's it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to having you again in the new year and have a wonderful holiday. Thank Thanks, you. You, Jen, too. you too. Hello, welcome back. Our next guest is Damien Devinish, and he is a psychotherapist here in London. Welcome, Damien. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. No problem. So Damien, can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do? So I'm a registered psychotherapist. I have been a therapist now for the past 16, 17 years. And I specialize in treating people for trauma as little as you can think to as large as you can imagine. And a part of trauma comes the challenge with addictions, whether substance or sexual, and also challenges with depression and anxiety. And so those are the areas that I tend to specialize in. And I also treat people for couples in relation to challenges as well. Right. And... I, I guess what I really want to talk about for the next couple of minutes is just how alcohol and drugs can impact a person over the holidays, especially over the holidays when there's so much emotion going on. Can you share with us? Well, of course. I'll go back to a client that I saw recently. And this is a client that I've seen over the years and challenges with substance abuse. And this is, of course, rooted in traumatic experiences. And I was saying to the client, well, because we have the holiday season fastly approaching, we need to have a system in place where you are practicing healthy habits. Healthy habits would look like, are you going to the gym? Are you eating um, meals that nourish the body? Are you having healthy connections? Are you practicing things intentionally to keep yourself safe and not depending on substances? And that's because with the holiday season comes the Christmas parties, um, come the celebrations and things of that particular nature. And people tend to partake with the idea of having only a small amount, but of course it gets out of hand and this brings upon us challenges then with depression and anxiety. And this is on top of the challenge with COVID already. And so we want to be mindful as to how substances will negatively impact our existence for this particular holiday season. Yeah. And oftentimes people might think, well, you just don't want me to have any fun. Yeah. But what are some other things that you can do to take care of your mental wellness other than partake in alcohol and, and other substances? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is intentionality. Intentionality speaks to things like, how do I intentionally rest? Because the holiday season brings a lot of activities and people tend to overwork tend to do too much in terms of family, friends, and also their personal work experiences. And so you have to make time to intentionally rest. Intentionally resting is not about it's dark or it's 10 o'clock or it's a particular time to go to sleep. 
Intentional resting is about giving myself the opportunity to unwind and take a breather. Another thing that comes to mind as well would be giving back to our community. So, um, you know, volunteering at the soup kitchen, volunteering with other organizations that help the less vulnerable, you would find that if you intentionally seek to help others, people who are in challenging times, less fortunate than yourself, it can also increase your sense of worth, your sense of happiness, your sense of joy, and therefore it limits the ability to need alcohol or substances to do that for you. Yeah, that's those are some really good tips, some really good tips. Mm. And so with regards to just mental wellness, if people are struggling during mm. this time, what are how can they seek support? Mm -hmm. Well, I think... The first thing that comes to mind would be planning in advance. So we already know that if I have a challenge with abuse of a substance or abuse of alcohol, do not put myself in an environment where those substances will be readily available and handed out. And so, for instance, I may take a friend with me to the staff party and I would say to the friend, I do not want to partake in a particular um, substance in terms of alcohol or marijuana or cocaine. Um, could you be my partner of accountability? Or if I'm going to a family function um, and there's a family text, maybe I want to send a message in a group chat and say to my family and my friends, I will attend a family gathering, but I will not be participating in substance use or substance abuse. If you do um, have that, I would really love it if you not offer that to me. So the first step would be to pre-plan your activities to avoid negative consequences. The second thing that I would say to individuals is that specific planning of your self-care, which is to say, keep your physical exercise, your gym routine up. And sometimes that doesn't have to be going to a gym to live weights. That could be walking. Um, intentionally going on trails, taking your dog out if you have a dog or going with a friend and, and just keeping that regular routine of self-care and that will help to limit excess or use at all when it comes to substances and alcohol. Intentionality. I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Damien, for being here with us today. It was my privilege. Thanks for having me. That's a wrap. Some common themes that we heard today about taking care of our mental and physical wellness through the holidays is exercise, eat well, use intention, acknowledge your sadness without guilt, and give back. Please come back and watch us next week as we speak with more Londoners doing some really inspiring things. And in the meantime, please visit our social media, like, share, and comment and have a wonderful and safe holiday season.